God we serve is not good some of the time. The God we serve is good all the time. And all the time, God is showing up good. Sisters, even on a bad hair day, God is still good. Somebody ought to help me up in here. While we slumbered, slumbered, and slept, God was watching over us. Justice was on one side, and, and mercy was on the other side. And while justice and mercy were arguing, grace snuck into our room. That's why we can say it was grace that woke me up this morning. I know it was grace that started me on my way. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. And when I get there, I'm not going to look like sanctified darkness. I'm going to praise his holy name. And I don't care what you think about it. Because real praise is when you don't care what the person sitting next to you thinks about. And if you mess with me, come on and give God some praise in this house. If you love the Lord, put your hands together and let the Lord know who signed you on tonight. Yeah. I don't mind praising him. I don't care what you say. I'm going to praise his holy and righteous name. Well, let me begin by saying I'm elephant elated, hyena happy, and peacock proud to be here tonight. Have you enjoyed the singing? Yeah. All the groups that have sung, yeah. Straight Company, all the other groups that have sung, I want you to put your hands together and show them how much you appreciate yeah. lending their ability to lift up the sweetest man known to all of them. I just want to give a shout out to the Heights greatest church this side of heaven for me. Some of God's greatest people. And I thank God for the opportunity and the privilege to serve such a great people. And then to be invited to the city of Tampa. Oh, what a joy to be in the sunshine state playground of the world, the great state of Florida. And to be with the East Side Church, to be with my friend and brother, Brother Perron, I thank God for him. And I want you to give him a love deposit. Put your hands together for my brother. Stand up, brother, you and your lovely companions. Stand up. Come on, give him a love deposit. Let him know you love and appreciate him. Praise God on that. Beloved, I don't want to be long because I know you've been here for a long time. I don't want to be long, but I sure want to be strong here for a minute. Y'all got time to hear this? You know, beloved, I have come to the point in my Christian walk with God. I've come to recognize that if I'm lost, it ain't going to be nobody's fault but mine. Y'all ain't saying that. Because when I think about all that God has done for you and you and you and you and you and you and yes, even you. When I think about all that he has done, all that God has gone through just to save a wretch like me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When I think about the God of heaven, how awesome he is in all of his splendor and his glory, he thought enough of you and I to send Jesus to die for our sins. I didn't have to wait on the passion of Christ to understand the price that Jesus paid on Calvary. If you don't know who he is, you better let me tell you. I say you better let me tell you. I serve a God. David said, come here David. Talk to us for a little while. 
David said in the great book of Psalms, I believe it was Psalm 23, the great psalm book of the Old Testament. David said, when I think about God, I can't help but think about God being, matter of fact, the Lord is my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why shall you not want, David? Because, listen to this, David says, he leads me. Wait, wait a minute, David. What does he do? He leads me. Well, David, if he's leading you, that means God is before you. That's right, Florence. He's before me. But then David didn't stop there. David said his rod and his staff provide me comfort. Wait a minute, David. You got God before you. You got his rod on one side, his staff on the other side. That means that God not only is before you, but God is beside you. But he ain't through yet. David said, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Look what we've got. We've got God before us, rod and staff beside us, goodness and mercy behind us. And I talked to my mama last night, and mama said, all night, all day, angels are watching over me. And I'm here to tell Tampa, if God is before you, beside you, behind you, got angels watching over you, the devil can't do you. No! Oh, y'all can't stand good preaching. That's good preaching. I want to leave you with these words. If you're a child of God, you got God before you. His rod and staff beside you. Goodness and mercy. And you got angels. You're somebody. I said, you're somebody in the high saddle. You know, many years ago, Just a few years ago, I was a little bit younger than I want to be right now. And I used to watch a program. And this program starred a particular actor who played as Columbo. Now, 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 don't, 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 don't laugh at me now. But I used to think that Columbo was the smartest man in the world. And the reason I thought that, beloved, was because Columbo could solve problems in 60 minutes. I mean, stuff that I thought would even confound Solomon. He saw it. In six minutes. But as I grew old, I came to understand that Columbo really wasn't that smart at all. Really, he's just a grade B actor. His name is Peter Falk. But I discovered that the smart person is the writer of the story because the writer knows the ending as well as the beginning.